my name is Rage and I am back today with another legendary review video for you all. As you guys may have noticed from the recent blog last Friday, we are actually getting Ebony Maw here as the next legendary. Um, a little bit of a surprise for a lot of people because of the fact that generally after Black Boat, it is generally Sherry. So uh, it is putting me in a little bit of a scramble right now just because I am currently farming uh, both Karnak as well as uh, Miss Marvel for the six stars so I can ultimately unlock Ebony Maw here at the six stars. But if you guys haven't already, um, I did make a video on unlocking Ebony Maw here at five stars. Um, unlike most legendaries, he actually is quite difficult to unlock. Um, there is a little bit of strategy involved in his notes, so I'm going to put the link in the description below for your guys' reference. But in today's video, we're going to talk about Ebony Maw, what he brings to the table, where he is in the meta right now, T Force to recommend, and last but not least, um, how he compares to the overall legendaries in the game. So, first and foremost, let's talk about his abilities, you guys. His basic ability, Needle Storm. He attacks essentially the primary target. And also, additionally, he does additional attacks based on how how hard you, how much you've actually leveled it up. So, as you can see here with the level six here, he does do a bonus attack two times. And if you were to T for it, it does allow him to have an extra strike. So, as you can see here, I haven't leveled it up yet just because I have not um, felt the need to do it because. Um, most of the time, I'm actually not using his basic all that much. Um, I'm actually using his special and his ultimate all the time, especially if paired with Thanos next to him, supplementing him with energy. So, um, unfortunately, I don't recommend this T4 right now just because I don't see it adding a lot of value. With that being said, uh, Ebony Ma here's special ability. Um, essentially, what you got to know is that he essentially is a combination of a couple characters, but it's kind of nice. Very similar to Invisible Woman. He applies defense up as well as offense down to all enemies and... If you were to T4 this ability from level 6 to the level 7 here, you can see that it actually applies the defense up for 2 turns. 100% I would recommend T4ing this just because, as you can see here, applying defense up, counter to all of himself as well as the Black Order, in addition to offense down. My goodness, this is absolutely a combination of a couple characters and um, for this to be a special ability, does quite a bit, cost quite a bit of energy here at 5 uh, energy, but well worth the upgrade for the T4. So. Go ahead with that. Um, next, you guys, I am working towards this as well, but his ultimate here essentially is stealing health and it does bypass heal block. So very, very similar to uh, to Minerva's ability here, but force transfusion ultimate here does apply additionally. After the heal, it does apply a slow for two turns. So um, both his abilities, not only can he apply an offense down with special, but he also applies a slow in addition to healing. And last but not least, as you can see here, from moving level six to the level seven here for the T4 upgrade, you can see that he additionally will fill up the speed bar by 5% for himself as well as his allies and reduce the speed bar for enemies. So, I mean, I just haven't gone around to T4ing this yet, but 100% I am going to go ahead with T4ing this as well. It provides a lot of value to his Black Order. In addition, my goodness, to his level 6, just having that slow for 2 turns. Absolutely recommend this T4. I just haven't gone around to it because I haven't needed him. Um, last but not least, you guys, Envoy of Thanos. Uh, Ebony Maw's passive ability here. So, essentially, on his spawn... He's able to gain the regen, death proof immunity, assuming uh, Thanos is on his team, of course, right? In addition to that, if uh, Thanos doesn't have um, the reality stone, he'll ground him the plus two regen, death proof. So, so even without having the full black order, you know, this pass is able to give Thanos a lot of benefit. In addition, the reason I actually use Eli's disability all the time is because uh, the death of enemy hero controller, uh, you get to gain that charge, applying immunity to all his allies and a barrier. So. My goodness, um, once again, this ability itself is just like another character altogether. It's unreal that he has so much uh, capabilities. As you can see here, as you're leveling from level 1 to level 4 to level 5, the, you're constantly bringing up the resistance of the Black Order in addition to uh, increasing the overall effectiveness of his barrier. So I can, you can see that I've already buried, I've already t 40 it here just because it does actually provide that extra 10% resistance. And this was key for me in unlocking the Doom Chapter 2. So 100%, that's the reason why I T4'd it. Um, but the next one will definitely be his ultimate. For your guys' reference, if there was a category in terms of how to uh, T4 it, I would recommend doing a special first just because that's a defense up and offense down. Next, I should have actually T4'd his ultimate next just because the fact that you can actually do this increase the speed bar and decrease the enemy speed bar is actually pretty significant. However, I did T4 his passive before that because I needed this for the Doom Chapter 2. And I'm thinking maybe I should have actually done his ultimate first. So if I could go back, I would do special, ultimate, and then lastly his uh, passive. 
I don't know if I still recommend his basic here. So that's just my recommendation, you guys, just because I don't actually use his basic altogether too much. But as you can see here, um, for his ISO 8, I do recommend as well um, just using the healer because he is generally the healer of the Black Order. So that's why I've upgraded to that. Reason it's level 3 is because of the fact that with the level 3, it does turn on the active healing. So um, essentially, he just gains the ability to be able to actually um, heal per turn. In addition, the level 2 covers the 10% health increase. So that's why I've done that. Um, definitely going forward, you guys, I definitely will consider level 4 and level 5 just because... Um, of how his usage in the game is overall his effectiveness. With that being said, let's talk about um, where he is in the game right now, you guys. You know, I'm sure you've noticed, but in the arena battles, even if I were to jump into arena right now, Black Order is seen as one of the top five in the game. So I would not be surprised if we see a bunch of random Black Order teams here. As you can see here on the left, Hulkster is Black Order. Um, not just that one, actually. Okay, so not, not too common maybe in the 200 bracket, but I know for sure if you guys are looking at the leaderboards here, um, definitely the Black Order is usually the top 50. So, I mean, um, you can see that their meta is very, very relevant thanks to Ebony Maw, what the Black Order brings to the table. The fact that he can provide so much sustain and uh, regeneration for his team. Um, in addition, you guys, um, the, the reference I like to use as well is let's talk about how he is utilized in the, uh, the campaign raids as well as Dark Dimension, right? So, I mean, Ebony Maw was a really pivotal piece for me when I was going through here, especially in the most recent Doom Chapter 2. Um, you can see here that we get a choice of Black Order, Hydra, or Power Armor. In my honest opinion, I've made videos on unlocking these guys, and honestly, I think Black Order is probably a team that you can utilize and be able to defeat these nodes at the lowest power, especially with uh, Doom 2-9 giving you Thanos on the team, and it almost encourages you to have to use the Black Order 429 just so that um, they, that Thanos becomes in power and he can actually assist you in finishing the node. So with that being said, for sure, campaigns, uh, Black Order can add value there. Um, in addition, you guys, you know, in raids, uh, my combination of Black Order uh, utilizing both Thanos as well as uh, Ebony Maw is the reason I'm able to go through and uh, I'll show you my, my team here, actually. But this is the, the roster I use right now. And as you can see here, I have Thanos right next to Ebony Maw, just supplementing him with energy, right? So this is my team right now. So you can see that Ebony Maw is very well utilized in the raids as well because of his sustain, especially if he has energy being supplemented by Thanos. And then subsequently, Ebony Maw also provides those benefits for Thanos being on his team. And last but not least, you guys, let's talk about Dark Dimension. Um, you know, if you guys can look here, uh, with especially the timed runs a lot of people have actually utilized them i'm not sure if i'm able to see the very end or let's go, let's go ahead and see if we can oh so i don't have access to it yet just because of the fact that i haven't started dark dimension 3 but um generally ebony ma is utilized as well in the later stages of the timed runs in addition to being able to be a p effective part of the game all across different modes so 100 right now you guys in my honest opinion you know, I'm starting to gear up for Dark Dimension 3, and there's very few characters right now that I know 100% is guaranteed that I'm going to utilize. And I can confidently say uh, Ebony Maw right now is a guarantee for me, bringing to both Dark Dimension 3 and ultimately Dark Dimension 4. So that's why I'm currently bringing up to Tier 13, and obviously Tier 14 is the next, uh, is the next stage for me. So um, with that being said, where does he rank with the other legendaries in the game? If we go ahead here and filter by this, uh, I, I love how they've been able to bring this filter now, and now we can just filter by legendaries. Um, but if we compare Ebony Mon now to like Invisible Woman, Magneto, Shuri, Star-Lord, Iron Man, Nick Fury, Phoenix, as well as Dr. Octopus, um, you have to think about how often he's utilized, right? I've talked about the arena, how he adds value in campaigns. Um, he can be utilized in challenges. He's uh, utilized all across raids, especially for Ultimate 7 when you need the sustainability. Last but not least, um, he's also very, very well utilized in Dark Dimension, especially the later ones being Dark Dimension 3, Dark Dimension 4. And the reference I like to always use is because Black Bolt, in my opinion, is one of the most perfect legendaries. As you can see here, I've t 4 would everything. I've isolated everything on him and really I'm building up his red stars. That's really the only thing that's required next as well as bringing him to the next tier for, uh, for uh, Dark Dimension 3 and Dark Dimension 4. I don't know if I'm utilizing him yet just because he's pure offense, right? And I gave Black Bolt a pure 10 out of 10 for his rating just because of how much value adds in the game. And I am, I can confidently say I am going to use Ebony Maw for Dark Dimension. So, you know, with that being said, I have to classify Ebony Maw as a perfect 10 out of 10 as well. Because even if I'm not T4ing his basic here, my goodness, he's utilized in so many game modes. His team, his meta, Black Order team is the top in the, in the arena right now. So, and the fact that he can be slotted into so many different teams, 
you know, um, giving him a 10 out of 10 and anything is, is the bare minimum, actually, for him. Anything less would be a disrespect to him as a legendary. So I'm very glad that uh, Scopely and Foxnet have been able to give him a lot of respect to this legendary. Um, he's been able to provide a lot of value in the game. And with that being said, you guys, as a future reference for you as well, um, for unlocking Ebony Mom, just as a reference, you know, you are going to require five Inhumans. And like I said, I put the link in the description below for reference, but these are the five that I utilize. I utilize Black Bolt, Karnak, Crystal, Quake, as well as Miss Marvel. Uh, Yo-Yo, you may not have it five stars, right? Just because she's only farmable right now in the premium orbs. But you can find Karnak here just by hitting find. Fortunately, I made a video on unlocking this as well, but you can see he's a Nexus 8-6 here. Not too bad. I think the power, the team power I used was about 150k around there. Um, Crystal, available in the arena store. Very easy. Quake available in the arena store, but take advantage of the fact that right now she is actually available via via farming as well. So in the Heroes Assemble 6-6, six, six, um, they've updated the Doom just for the last month of the year, right? So definitely take advantage of farming her if you guys haven't got her up to speed yet. Last but not least, Miss um, Marvel here, very readily available as well. If you search here to the right, it's going to be the Mystic 2-6. So um, very accessible. The really hard um, target to actually obtain is black bolt but fortunately a lot of people farm black bolt through the asgardians so hopefully you guys have them this time around from the most recent event um being a couple weeks ago so there you guys have it um that's my rating overall for ebony ma hope you guys were able to gain insight in terms of how much you invest in them i definitely think um next to black bolt and phoenix one of the best legendaries in the game very very happy with his skill set what he brings to the table what he brings across all game modes so there you guys have it. Thank you as always for watching, you guys. I do believe Emity Ma is uh, expected to come out next week. So look forward to the double Shard event. We still have some time to prepare. So as always, you guys, thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Please leave your thoughts down below in the comments, your thoughts and considerations, and any kind of feedback you'd like. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.